if you love Star Wars and also model kits, I think Bandai Star Wars kits is probably one of the best that you can get in the market right now. And if you're in Japan, it's, there's even better news because you know some members actually shared that if you're in Japan and you go to Aeon stores, some of the stocks such as the Sand Trooper, Boba Fett Slave One, and also ATST were going for all around 1,000 yen. So you're wondering, hey, how much is 1,000 yen? Well, 1,000 yen is about nine US dollars, which is ridiculously cheap for those border kits. And I have to say that Bandai Star Wars border kits are really, really great. And not to mention that you know the Snow Speeder is only going for 500 yen. So it's ridiculously cheap, and obviously very good news if you're a Star Wars fan who's building your collection through uh, Bandai's model kit catalog. But it kind of begs the question, right? Um, how well exactly is the Star Wars line doing under Bandai's model kit, plum model line? Well, if you ask us, I don't think this is a good sign. Um, you know, Bandai has been going at it for the last few years already. But I think, you know, if you look at the local uh, hobby stores who has been stocking up both Gun Plus and also um, Star Wars Motor Kit, you will notice that the Star Wars kit don't move as fast as anything else in the store. So that is actually quite a recent trend. And from our uh, you know own uh, quarter survey, when we speak to some of the stores owners, and we do ask you know sometimes we do casually ask them and say, hey, are the Star Wars kits selling well enough? You know because we don't see them moving from the stores that often. And most often time they do say that yeah, you know, even with a lot of promotion, there just aren't that many people buying Star Wars model kits. So for us, there could be a few reasons as to why that is. Uh, but before I get to that, I just want to say that, you know, given that the promotion at the recent Aeon stores, it's kind of a worrying sign because Japan is kind of a big market, not only for model kits, but also for Star Wars fans who love model kits. So I think Japan is supposed to be the home market and it's supposed to dominate in this category, at least for Star Wars, but it is not. So I think that's one of the um, weak signs that this line is not doing very well for Bandai, unfortunately. Um, so coming back to the local toy stores, you know, uh, for some of the uh, reasons why we think is the Star Wars model kit line is not doing well, is number one, um, you know, I don't think Star Wars is as hot as it used to be. If you look, if you talk to the younger uh, plum model hobbyists today, they probably don't really, you know, take to Star Wars as much as the older generation X fans. So that's one side, right? And of course, number two, being a plum model hobbyist, you will probably have limited amount of budget and time in terms of what you can buy and what you actually <laughs> spend time to build and really customize and paint those kits. So that's what we think is the two constraints. But number three, if you ask us, you know, the last few movies such as The uh, Force of the Awakens and the others were just really not helping the franchise at all in terms of moving to the right direction. So for me, at least, you know, I used to be a big Star Wars fan when I was young, but as I grew older, I kind of grew up with Star Wars because, you know, the series didn't really move, uh, the franchise didn't really move that far until episode one, two and three came out. But for now, I seriously don't think that the uh, Bandai Star Wars line is doing very, very well. So I do foresee that, you know, Bandai is going to slow down in terms of um, what they're going to produce. Well, unfortunately, Bandai has already probably paid for the license to produce all the kits for the Star Wars movies, probably, uh, you know, episode one or the episode nine. So I think once episode nine comes out, and premieres, there's gonna be a few more model kits, but I think that's where Bandai just gonna pull the handbrake and just stop it, right? They're not gonna produce any more characters or, or the vehicles or anything more than, other than more than that. So I don't think they're even gonna go down to the um, Japanese realization to create some funky looking um, Japanization characters of the Star Wars um, figures. So yeah. For now, we do think that if you're a Star Wars fan and if you're in Japan, hey, do grab the great offers that's on sale today for 1,000 yen to get Sand Trooper or Boba Fett Slave 1 or ATST, and those are 148 scale, mind you. It's a really great deal, and it's probably a good time to you know stock up if you plan to build a few of those guys in your collection.
Now this piece of news really caught us off guard. We did not see this coming because we don't know the Ghost Horror series very well. But Banda has decided to release the Dark Ghost Horror coming soon. And it looks great in its alternative colors. So that is the good news. The bad news of course, this is a premium Banda exclusive. So you will have to decide how much you love the Ghost Horror to actually fork out the additional cash to get the same Ghost Horror but in different alternate colors. So essentially everything else is the same. They are nothing new with this uh, Dark Ghost Horror. It is just in different colors. So I would love to hear from those of you guys who love the series or you know grew up watching the Ghost Horror as a kid and you got to complete the entire collection of what's been released by Bandai. I think this is it. This is your chance to buy the Dark Ghost Horror. But for us, uh, I think we'll just stick with the original Ghost Horror thing that is good enough. But I don't think we're gonna spend any more additional money just to buy the Dark Ghost Horror. When I first saw this picture of the Grand Dazzler Infinitism, I kind of thought it was actually a metal build kit, so I didn't pay much attention to it. It was only when I realized that, hey, this is actually a high grade 1144 skill model kit, I was really excited because finally I can buy an awesome looking Grand Dazzler that's not a metal build that's gonna cost me an arm and a leg. So at 5,184 yen, it's coming in April. I do have to say that the engineering, the proportion, everything looks really, really great. I kind of dig that they included tons of accessories and of course at the double spacer as well is also included so you don't actually have to pay for a separate version with a separate list of all the different accessories. So it comes fully loaded and at that price point I think if you love the retro kits that's been uh, you know, redesigned with a cooler looking easier look such as the Mazinga Z and the Great Mazinga, uh, I think this is definitely already on your pre-order list but for me I think this is a no-brainer definitely be getting this tons of details and also kind of like the gimmick where you know on the wrist there's movable parts for you to move the grandizer into its um, combat poses when it's holding the double spacer and coming soon in may is of course the figure as standard ultraman suit a we do have to say that this guy looks really really great it contains the same red separation parts and silver as the Ultraman B-Type and uh, Ultraman Suit 7.5 and it also comes with the very cool weapon gauntlet you know two of them and also the guillotine effect parts and of course there's a beam generator part included together with the stand as well and of course the biggest gimmick for this figure standard is the uh, LED unit that lights up both the timer and also the eye so do take note that you know the LED don't really have a timer effect where it doesn't change from blue to red uh, automatically you do have to change it um, manually through a poking system which I'll share the link to our previous review of Ultraman B type but all in all I do have to say that you know the figure standard series for Ultraman looks very very nice but we do hope that they fix the issue with the torso where you can bend uh, the figure forward as what we've seen in Ultraman B type and finally some full metal panic news the M94 that has been teased by Bandai uh, we just got a lot more information this time around it does seem that it's gonna come with a lot of weaponry almost full set of weaponry that comes with the uh, kit itself the bad news is that you don't actually get the LED eyes as what we've seen from the teaser and from the prototype pictures it does not seem to be a high gloss finish type of kit so if you love it in matte probably great but if you want it to be in high gloss finish you probably need to get a can of spray and you know get it done and over with the next kit that's um, coming up very soon as well is the 160 scale Gurren's Bag version 4 aggressor unit looks great in this color treatment uh, if you already got the earlier Gurren's Bag would you be paying the same just for the aggressor unit in different colors um, that's the question that I have for you guys who are collecting this and of, of course in February there's something that's coming up is this uh, 160 scale Arbalest version 4 that's coming equipped with an emergency deployment booster and I don't want to say that the deployment booster really does add a different uh, you know dimension to the kit it definitely looks a lot more complete because if you just look at the um, mobile suit itself it looks kind of bad but with the deployment booster it looks really really neat so 
that's our video for today you know uh this is all non gunpla news i think the one that we are really excited about is really the grand dazer i think the grand dazer is a great kit to have if you're into collecting the old retro uh kits that's coming up in a new revised look but for now we do think that the bandai star wars line is not doing well in the market that's at least what we are seeing so far and also talking to a lot of the toy stores that we've been through uh, but if you think otherwise do let us know uh, we'd love to hear your comments in the comment section down below and we'll put a link into the bandai star wars group on facebook if you want to connect with fellow bandai star wars um, modelers to build a community right yeah? so that's our video for today thank you so much for watching but please do subscribe to our channel if you want to get more news on anything on plamo um, toys statues and more thanks for watching and please leave a comment have a great day.